Yo, we're gonna talk about ionic compounds today. And we're gonna begin with a very simple example. All right, let's get down to it. There we have the valence shell structure of sodium and chlorine. Now, what is a valence shell structure? Well, it's simply drawing the elements. And I only care about drawing out the valence shell and the electrons on those valence shells. Now, there's a whole bunch of inner shells and inner electrons that I really don't care about because chemistry is really about the interactions and behaviors of those valence electrons. Boom! So let's get down to it. Here we have sodium, which is a very reactive metal. Put a little bit in it in water and you see it jumping around like a Mexican jumping bean. Yeah. And chlorine, which is a <coughs> toxic, <coughs> toxic, toxic gas. Yo, it's very toxic. And if you put too much of it, you may die. So, but when the two elements come together, buzz -a boom with enough force, what is going to happen is you're going to get a transfer of electrons from sodium to chlorine. Now, why does the sodium give out the va its valence electron? Well, one, because these elements are not happy. All right? They're just not happy. They want to achieve a noble gas configuration. All right? You got to know that. They want to achieve the noble gas configuration. All right? And how do they do that? Well, there's two methods. First is either losing that one electron and then whatever's inside now becomes a noble gas configuration. Now, if I want to expand this, All right, I just drew the last two outer shells, okay? And when this electron is lost, the outermost electron is lost, what happens now is that you get a full noble gas configuration that's in there, okay? So that is what's happening. So two ways to do it. Do to achieve the noble gas configuration. One is to lose the electron, and the other, the second way, is to, well, instead of losing that one electron, it could, in theory, gain seven more electrons to achieve a noble gas configuration for sodium, in this case, okay? And now, what do you think is more energetically um, efficient, all right? Which method do you think is more energetically efficient? Losing one electron or gaining seven electrons? It turns out that losing that one electron is more energy efficient. And so this is what it's going to do. Lose that one electron to chlorine. Chlorine, on the other hand, has seven electrons on the outer shell, the valence shell. And it wants to also achieve a noble gas configuration. And to do that, it has to either gain one electron to have the full noble gas configuration or to lose all seven of it. And which is the more energy efficient method? Well, to gain that one electron. And this is what exactly is happening when sodium and chlorine, bam, come together. So. Sodiums, sodium is now left with the inner shell electrons. And we note it by giving sodium the positive sign because it has more protons than electrons. How many more protons than electrons? Just one. So it has one extra proton giving it a plus charge, giving it a sodium, becoming, making it becoming sodium ion. 
Chlorine, on the other hand, gave one electron. So now it has one electron more than protons. And so how many more? Just negative one more. Remember, electrons carry a negative charge, so that means it has, um, it has more negatives than positives. And so these two come together, and they form an electrostatic interaction between the two. Oh, I should draw it with another pen. There's an electrostatic interaction between the two. All right? This electrostatic interaction attraction is what we call an ionic bond. Right? The transfer of electrons, right? The transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal, whereby you form a positive ion, a cation, and this one becomes a negative ion, an anion, and when they both have a type of attraction, you form an ionic bond. And this is what we know as an ACL. Okay? Sodium chloride. Now, we'll get into the naming of the formulas a little later. But now, I just want you to focus on the ionic bonds. Okay? So, I've got another example here, lithium and bromine. Now, when lithium and bromine come together, it's going to do it the exact same thing. Electron is going to transfer from lithium, and it's going to get donated to bromine. And you have a lithium ion with a bromine, bromide. Whoa! <laughs> Almost got that. And these two will have an electrostatic attraction known as an ionic bond because of the positive ion attracted to the negative ion. Okay? Let's look at another one. Potassium and iodine. It's going to do the same thing. Electrons are going to don be donated from the metal and get attracted to that non-metal. And what is it going to form? It's going to form a potassium cation and an iodide. And these two are also going to be attracted and form an ionic bond. Right, that's it. So, what have you noticed about these ionic compounds? Well, it turns out that this example that I've shown you is sodium, lithium, potassium. They happen to be group 1 elements. And group 1 elements are alkali metals. All right? Fantastic. And the other example I've shown you now is chlorine, bromine, iodine. These are group 7 elements, known as the halogens. The halogens. Okay? And these are known as alkali metals. Now, that's it. Next, we're going to talk about the ionic bonds of more complicated met metallic elements and non-metallic elements. And so, you get a picture of that.